Hey guys, it's Arlene from A Crafty Latina. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a quick tutorial um, to teach you how to do shadow um, the backing for letters. And I'm going to do two ways. I'm going to do one just on Cricut Design Space without using any other apps or tools. And then one using Inkscape um, if you're on a PC. So let's get started. First, we want to just type whatever it is, the text that we're going to use. I'm literally going to just type the word shadow. And the font that I'm going to be using is Alexandria Script, which I got from the font. And I'll link to that video so that you know how to download fonts from the font and bring them into your computer. Um, we want to bring this closer because, of course, the letters aren't even touching. So you go up to the top and you do letter space. And I just bring them as close as I possibly can without compromising um, the word and that you can still read it properly and that we're able to weld it. So I want to make sure that all these little loops touch so that when we weld it, everything is one seamless word and it cuts out properly. So I don't like that the S um, is not separate, but right now I'm going to leave this like this. Actually, it reads okay. You can still see that it's the word shadow, so I'm going to be okay with that. I'm going to duplicate this because I always like to have an extra copy in case something goes wrong. And I'm going to weld this first original one. And everything is taking a little longer on Design Space lately, but okay, there, I weld it. So I'm going to make this a little bigger just so that I have. I'm going to hide this out. Sorry, of course I did the wrong one. Hide that out. And this one now I'm going to duplicate it about three times. And this is how I create the shadows. It's, um, I'll duplicate this one more time so that I keep the original deck here, down here. So this is how I create it without leaving design space. It's the same. You take the word and you layer it one on top of the other. But this is important because you want to layer it just a little offset, not on top, because if you layer it on top, it might as well be the same word with not, you know, no shadow. But you want it to be a little off and you can do it. I do it more towards the right than to the left. So already you see that it's a little, um, you can see a little bit more of a shadow building. Once I put the first layer on, I highlight the whole thing. I go up here and I align it to the top. That's important to me because I want to make sure that these layers um, are aligning. So I take the next one, bring it up. I don't do anything. I don't weld. I don't attach until all of the layers are in the place that I need them to be. So again, I bring this one in. And then I just highlight the whole thing, align it to the top. This one I'm going to move out a little bit more because I don't like the way. Okay. There. Align it to the top. I mean, you still want it to, to sort of read and you want the loops and the, and the dips and the curves for the letter so that you can tell that the shadow um, is also the word shadow. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with how that will turn out. Let me turn this one into white so we can see the offset from it. So this is what it's going to look like. I'm not hating that. I kind of like it. I mean, you can do one more if you want it like a little thicker, but this gives you a great idea of what it can look like. Um, if you like the little white spaces still left in the middle, you would just stop here and just highlight this and weld it and it would just become um, one, one option. There's two ways to fill in these gaps if you decide that that's what you want to do. One way is you can get a shape from the side. And I usually just pick the circle and just unlock it and make it into whatever shape you need to sort of fill in the gap. Here, move it around. And this takes a lot of work, but it's it's one option of doing it if this is how you want to do it. And then once you get the shape, then you would just highlight everything and then you would hit weld and it would completely close that out. And that's perfectly fine to do it that way. But if you have a lot of gaps sometimes and it's going to take you long to do each one, what you can do is weld. Once you're done with the shadow, you weld it. And then you go to the bottom here on the right and you click contour and then just contour all the little spaces that are left. Just get contour them out. And when you contour, that just means that is no longer um, anything that your design will show. It's completely going to be blacked out. And there you have it. 
and that's how you can create let me bring that to the front so we can see what that looks like and that's how you can create a shadow for your word on Cricut Design Space without even leaving Cricut Design Space. It's just layering your images in the back, welding it, and then contouring out any gaps or spaces that you want to leave, that you want to leave out. So that's one way. Let's get rid of that. The second way that I'm going to show you is we are going to go and use Inkscape. The one thing that I do before um, I take it to Inkscape is I turn this back into black because I want it to be a shadow. So when it takes it there, I want to be able to see it um, that way. So I'm on a PC. The only way you can use Inkscape is if you're on a PC. There are other apps and ways of doing it from your iPad or your phone. But on a PC, on your keyboard, you have the little Windows icon, which is like those four little squares that look like a window. You hold that down. You hold down your Shift key at the same time. And then you press the letter S. And you'll see this um, toolbar that comes up. And this is like your snipping tool. I always keep it to the first one, the rectangular snip. All you need to do is basically draw a rectangle, just hold on your mouse key and drag across. Um, and that automatically makes a copy of it and saves it in the background for you. I open Inkscape and just paste it as you normally would with Control V or right click and paste. So this is um, the word that we brought in now from our design space. We go up to the top toolbar for Inkscape and under path, you click on trace bitmap. A new little menu on the right will show up and it'll your word will show up whatever word is highlighted on your screen will show up here um, the minimum colors that it shows is two like I only want black but it doesn't have one so two you will leave two under scans and two under colors make sure remove background is checked off so that you don't have a white background this is going to be a transparent in the back and your threshold is at the highest that you can go um, which is usually 0.98. If we go one more, it'll probably turn it all black. Yeah, and we don't want that. So it's the one right under when it turns all black. Um, and then you just hit OK. And what that just did is you made your word shadow into an SVG. So you drag it, you click on it, and you drag the top layer, the path that you just created. And you know that this is the new one because it'll say path ID on the side here on the right side. And this is the one that we previously brought in, which was the image. So we can delete that top one. We no longer need it. We're just going to work with the shadow layer at the bottom. So this is now um, the path that we created. So you hold the control key down and the number zero. And then you just keep hitting it, the number, keep holding the control key and hitting the number zero until you see the shadow that you like. And I normally do two, and I think that's great. If you do three, it might get a little distorted. Um, if you go too far and you don't like it, keep holding the control key and hit the letter Z as in zebra. And that just brings, that just un, undo, it, how did you say undo? <laughs> it, it takes away the last step that you just finished doing. I can't, I don't know why I can't say it undoes the last step. Um, so I like it. The one thing that I don't want is these little gaps here. Um, you can leave it like this if you want with the little white transparent gaps in the middle. I personally don't like it. If it's a shadow, I want it to be completely um, covered in black. So I go up to the left here, the second one, the top arrow is the one we normally use just to drag our image around. The second one actually breaks it into little nodes. Okay, so you click on nodes and all these little nodes, which is actually what they are, show up around the little um, white areas that we want to delete. So we just drag across it and just hit delete and it'll just delete all the little nodes that you need for, the, for it to go away. It'll just go away. It's really, it's a really simple step. Um, I'll even delete these here on the S so that we don't have anything left. It'll all be. You click back on the top arrow and then it'll select um, the image. So now we want to do file, save as. I'm just going to save it on my desktop and I'm going to just call it shadow. Okay, so we're done in Inkscape now. Let's go back to Design Space. Um, so this is where we want to bring that shadow in. So you upload it like you would any other SVG and other image that you've created. You hit Upload, you hit Browse. I'm going to find it on my desktop. There it is. It's the latest one that we just did. Let me bring it in. You can tag it. Um, shadow Background. 
so that later on if you're looking for it if you have a lot a lot a lot of files all you have to do is when you do image search you type you know shadow background or just shadow and it'll pop up always get yourself into the habit of tagging your projects when you upload them so that you can you know easily find them later so here it is it doesn't bring it in at the size that we want so let's look this is six six five five so i'm just going to go down here to the bottom six six nope five five and i'm going to change this to white just so that we have an offset color and we see it and then this is going to move put this to the back this is going to move to the white's going to move to the front and there you have it there's your shadow just grab them together make sure they're centered horizontally and vertically and there it is guys easy peasy so um that's it and then when you go to hit make it you're going to have two different mats as usual because these are two different two different images you're going to have the one to cut out in black and the one to cut out in white the other way you can do this if you don't want to cut it out in vinyl and this is maybe for like a print and cut project um again let me just quickly align them you highlight them make sure that they're both highlighted together you go down here to the bottom right and you hit flatten and this is all one image right now so when you go ahead and hit make it you know that it's a print and cut because it has the box around it so it's literally going to cut around only around the exterior part of this and you're just going to have one full word um for your shadow and that's it. Uh, I hope this was easy. I hope this, you know, gives you a new tool or tip or trick that you can use as you continue to design. Make sure to hit subscribe and like if you found value in this video so that you don't miss my future videos. And thank you so much. It's Arlene from A Crafty Latina and I will talk to you soon.